Okay. Thank you very much. So I'm uh, Daniel Tuma from uh, University Politecnica from Catalonia, from here, from Barcelona. And together with CSIC people, we made the uh, uh, first test with the EMSO generic instrument model at OPSI Observatory here in uh, very close to Barcelona. Okay, so the outline of the presentation is uh, first I'm going to briefly introduce you the EMSO network and the uh, uh, EMSO generic instrument model, which is called a gene prototype. Next, I'm going to give you some detail about the sui based data acquisition system that we developed for, for this and how we implement this based on OGC source as a gateway for a gene and how this was implemented for actually for this, uh, this deployment. And I will conclude my presentation with some statistics about the first deployment at OPSI Observatory. Okay, so EMSO, it is um, uh, Air ERIC um, infrastructure. So it is a network of marine, a multidisciplinary uh, seafloor and water column observatories around Europe. And uh, the level of this is similar to OI in the United States or IMOs in Australia. And it is composed um, presently by 11 nodes and the four test sites which are um, uh, also uh, cabled and autonomous uh, uh, observatories. So here you can see around Europe there are diverse uh, observatories which uh, are placed in K location in order to, uh, to, to make this uh, uh, network. Okay, so uh, next I'm going to give you some detail about the prototype. This is uh, the prototype of a gym, which is a very compact observatory node. It can be uh, um, equipped with up to 12 uh, instruments. The core instruments are six, so here you can see that there is an ADCP, a CTD, a turbidity meter, a tsunami meter, an oxygen optode, and a passive acoustic sensor. This is coming as a core uh, equipment, uh, equipped a gym prototype. And uh, this was developed in such a way that it can work in any kind of the, the uh, EMSO node that I present you earlier. So it can go on the mooring line, in the seabed, or in cable observatories. Uh, the core variable that we're choosing to be pro uh, provided by GIM are uh, uh, done in, a, in such a way that they can uh, be used by multiple disciplines like, such as geoscience, physical oceanography, biochemistry, and marine ecology. So here you can see the deployment. This was this is in the uh, right side is the OPSI observatory and the uh, node. And to this node, it was uh, attached a secondary node, which is the GIM prototype. Okay. Uh, in the, this first deployment, the sensors were parameterized to be uh, working at the highest sampling rate because we are cable observatory, so we want to test the full acquisition chain with the highest sampling rate. So you can see here huge sampling rate, like one sample per second for a couple of sensors uh, or um, ADCP every minute, and also the ocean sonic, which produce uh, WAV files with very high sampling rate every five minutes. Uh, five, minute, five minutes of data every 30 minutes. Okay, so uh, in order to, to make all this system to be interoperable, what we were thinking is that, okay, let's try to make the gateway of the EGIM, which is based on the, of, of each utility, uh, to be based on SOS uh, from OGC. So the SOS is the gateway to the real-time data produced by EGIM, uh, also, the, the, uh, all the sensors that are connected to a gene, but also to the technical information from a gene. So this data, it is accessible from the data management platform, uh, which is providing other products and services through this uh, source server. Okay, how to do this in an automatic way? So uh, the implementation in, in the first uh, prototype, it was done with three uh, virtual machines. In the, cyber, uh, in, in the cyber infrastructure of a gene, and each machine has a specific functionality. First, there is a machine which is in charge of acquisition and instrument control. So what is doing the gene hardware is just make a transparent link between each individual instrument and the acquisition system. The acquisition system is based on a generic software which is able to work with, uh, with any instrument based on the sensor mail description of this instrument. So what we are doing here it is to write the description of the sensor, but also how the sensor has to be interrogated to provide information, and how this information should be further away transferred to source 
inside of the sensor ML. So for example, if we imagine, uh, let's say a sensor produce a lot of parameters, but not all of them, for example, they want, we want to be inserted to the source because some of the parameters are just some text. We, we encode all this information in the sensor ML the same way that the data sheet of the instrument is describing you how the instrument is responding. And also, for example, if uh, there is a change of the sampling rate or something like this, this is written in the sensor ML. So this information, it is keep it always there. And the, the change of the sampling rate is producing by the acquisition agent every time when you change the sensor ML. And all this flows to the source. So everyone on top of this, it's aware of any change of, of, the, of the network. Also there, as I told you, the, the, uh, the information is inserted to the source server. This is done through transactional operation, which are uh, standard operation, but they are push operations. So the source, what is uh, receiving uh, information directly from the agent in, in uh, transactional operation, like insert sensor, which is inserting the new sensor ML, insert template, which is describing how the information is actually codified. And based on this template, next they insert the results, which are the, the actual value, the real-time value of the measurements. And finally, there is a monitoring system in order to, to check that there is a, if there is any issue in the chain. The source is providing next the data to the data management platform, which is in charge to make quality control, to produce uh, NetCDF files for the further uh, users or data streams or also for scientific uh, application which work with this raw data. And this is done in real time. <clears throat> okay, so I, I tell you before how it works in cable mode. And here it's a uh, diagram how it works in, in uh, autonomous mode because for example, as Jim I told you, it's going to be placed also in observatory where it's going to work autonomously or with some limited communication. So the same idea to have uh, uh, same agent, which is a C uh, source code, which it's an open uh, source code uh, uh, written by UPC, and it is uh, working the same way with the sensor mail, which describe how the data it is uh, it is present to the source agent can be then uh, can be decodified in order to be pushed it to the source server. So, for example, if there is some communication, all the data that communicate through the platform go to the source agent, and based on the sensor mail description, go to the uh, uh, um, SWE agent, go to the source uh, database, and uh, further away. Also, recover memory if it's autonomous after half an year, or one year of, of deployment, you can recover all the memory, and you can describe how the, this memory. Uh, so, for example, files, how these files are structured, such a way that the same uh, SWE agent can introduce the information to the source. Okay, so actually uh, the agent, it was written in C code because we were um, willing that this code can go even in more restricted platform. For example, data loggers, gliders, or uh, other very, uh, or profilers, or things like this. So actually it was tested in some gliders and in some data loggers, and it seems to be a uh, technology that can perform plug and play, more or less, because somebody has to read, write the sensor mail, but uh, it can provide um, approximately 90% of the plug and play at the, at the basic level for, for most of the platforms. Okay, so here I'm going to give you some statistics, just some data that we collect. For example, I told you that we have technical information. So for example, here you can have power consumption information that is provided in the same source. So somebody that can see some uh, um, uh, missed data in some instrument, it can go also to the technical information to see if something happens to the slot that was dealing with this uh, instrument. So maybe some power consumption higher than normal or things like this. So uh, the idea is that all this information, the technical information and the instrument information can be provided to the user in, uh, in, the, um, in the same way, to be easy to, to cross-correlate uh, them. So for example, here we can also, uh, we, we were able to check that the information from the CTD was similar to the information from OPSI. Uh, for, for example, in this case, the CTD was placed half a meter uh, above, so more or less uh, uh, the information is very similar. Uh, here also we can we were able to easily um, cross uh, correlate the information provided by Andera sensor because we have also an Andera sensor on a buoy on top of OPSI. and uh, also the ADCP which provides 20 beams so every meter it provides the currents in north uh, south and east west 
So also we have an ADCP where we're able to, to check the, the information from both in, in, the, in, the, um, in an easy way because they both talk, uh, let's say, similar. So thank you for information, for, for, the, uh, for listening. If you have any questions.